Number 10. Murmansk. The Murmansk was a Soviet warship built during the early 1950s. It was sold to an India-based company for scrap in 1994 when it was nearly 40 years old. Plans were made to tow the vessel to its new home from Norway, but the tugboat's cable snapped shortly after leaving, causing the Murmansk to run aground. The heavily listing ship sat in place for years. While it attracted curious visitors, fishermen and conservationists became increasingly worried that the damaged vessel was harming the environment. Experts mistakenly assumed that storms would destroy Murmansk, but it held together in one piece until 2009. The Norwegian government finally decided that year to remove the ship from the water. It was too damaged to tow like normal, so workers built a breakwater around it and waited for the site to dry up. Then they took the vessel apart piece by piece. There are lingering concerns about the possible presence of radioactive substances like polonium on the Murmansk. Scientists ruled this out, but people still have their doubts, including some researchers who suspect that the findings are inaccurate. And they did find several non-radioactive hazardous materials, including fuel remains, asbestos, and PCB. But if there were any radioactive chemicals aboard the ship, we'll probably never know, because it was recycled and no longer exists. Number 9. HMS Resolute in 1853, the British Royal Navy ship HMS Resolute set out for the Arctic under Captain Henry Kellett. Its mission was to find missing explorer Sir John Franklin and his crew, who had disappeared seven years earlier while searching for a sea route between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans called the Northwest Passage. As luck would have it, the Resolute became trapped in an ice floe off northern Canada, leaving its crew helpless as it drifted 1.7 miles eastward every day. They waited out the cold winter and abandoned the ship in the spring of 1854. Little did the crew know while this was all going on that the Resolute had broken free from the ice. In September 1855, over a year and a half after the ship was deserted, the crew of an American whaling vessel called the George Henry spotted the Resolute off the coast of Baffin Island, Canada. It had drifted some 1,200 miles from where it got stuck. The United States Congress bought the ship for $40,000 and refitted it. As a so-called token of community, U.S. Navy Commander Henry J. Hartstein sailed the ship to England and presented it to Queen Victoria in 1856. Resolute remained in British waters, serving in the Royal Navy until 1879, when it was retired and salvaged for timber. Some of the vessel's wood was used to build a desk that sits in the Oval Office of the White House. Number 8. MV Lyubov Orlova Built in Yugoslavia in 1976, MV Lyubov Orlova was a Soviet ice-strengthened cruise ship that was used primarily for Antarctic cruises. It ran aground in 2006 and was towed to Ushuaia in Tierra del Fuego, Argentina's southernmost city. They racked up $251,000 in charter debts and was repossessed in 2010. It spent the next two years impounded in Newfoundland, Canada. Neptune International Shipping bought the Lyubov Orlova in 2012 with plans to scrap it. While being towed to the Dominican Republic in 2013, the ship broke free from its tugboat. The crew tried to reattach the line, but their efforts were no match for 22 mile per hour winds and 10 foot tall, 3 meter waves. An offshore supply vessel regained control of the vessel to prevent it from posing a hazard to regional gas and oil operations. But once the Lyubov Orlova reached international waters, it was no longer considered a danger and was set free. A few days later, the ship was seen drifting in a northeasterly direction, 290 miles, 467 kilometers from St. John's, Newfoundland. Less than a month after that, an emergency position indicating radio beacon EPIRB was picked up 700 miles off the coast of Kerry, Ireland. An EPIRB device must be exposed to water before it starts transmitting signals, leading officials to believe that the Lyubov Orlova probably sank. In 2014, rumors circulated that the ship was spotted off the English coast and that it was infested with rats, but these claims were debunked. The vessel's fate remains a mystery. Number 7. SS Urang Medan in 1948, the crew of an American vessel allegedly discovered a ghost ship called the SS Urang Medan drifting in the Pacific, roughly 460 miles 740 kilometers southeast of the Marshall Islands. The boat was reportedly littered with crew members' bodies, and it supposedly caught fire and sank shortly after its discoverers boarded. According to the story, the SS Urang Medan's crew actively avoided being detected by authorities while traveling from a small Chinese port to Costa Rica. Native people living on Bokak Atoll in the Marshall Islands and an Italian missionary claimed that a German man initially survived the disaster. He explained that the ship's crew perished from the poisonous fumes of an improperly stored cargo of sulfuric acid. The survivor supposedly died shortly after recounting the ordeal. Nobody's ever been able to confirm what happened aboard the SS Urang Medan or if it even existed in the first place. 
Its history and origins are unknown, and searchers for an accident investigation report and the ship's official registration have failed to turn up any records. What do you think? Was the SS Urang Madan a tall tale, or is it possible that it literally flew under the radar throughout its entire existence? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. L. Wade Childress If you drive through the small city of Prairie du Chien in Crawford County, Wisconsin, you might pass by an old 176-foot-long, 54-meter pushboat sitting in an open field. It's called the L. Wade Childress, and nobody seems to know how it got to its current resting place over 200 miles north of where it sank. In fact, very little is known about the ship, period. The L. Wade Childress was built in 1948. It sank in the Mississippi River near Fort Madison, Iowa in December 1985 due to an early freeze that caused ice chunks to flow through the water and batter many vessels. The boat was raised the following year and somehow ended up along Highway K in Prairie du Chien. It's been there for years now. Rumors have circulated about someone wanting to turn the L. Wade Childress into a bed and breakfast, but it hasn't happened. Nobody even seems to know who was behind these alleged plans or why nothing's been done with the vessel. Most of the ship's rooms are empty and falling apart. There's not much to see inside besides some bathrooms, a fuse box, and a stove. Still, given its bizarre location, the L. Wade Childress remains an ongoing topic of curiosity. Number 5. SV Kaz 2 In April 2007, a three-man crew set out on a 39-foot, 12-meter catamaran called the SV Kaz 2 with plans to spend two months sailing around Australia. At the helm was the skipper, Des Batten, who was joined by his brothers Peter and John Tunstead. The trio was bound for Western Australia, where they all lived. Three days later, the vessel was seen drifting over 100 miles, 161 kilometers off the Australian coast, near the White Sunday Islands with its engine idling. The CAS-2 was in near-perfect condition, minus a rippled sail. Newspaper pages, a pile of clothing on a bench, a laptop, and a half-empty cup of coffee were found aboard. Numerous theories regarding the missing men quickly sprang up. It was possible, perhaps, that they had fallen victim to pirates or drug smugglers. Or maybe they staged their disappearance as part of an insurance scam. Some people even wondered if a supernatural event was to blame. The three men were never found. Investigators surmised that one of the Tunstead brothers fell overboard while trying to untangle a fishing lure that was caught in the boat's propeller. The other Tunstead brothers tried to rescue him and also fell into the water. Batten dropped the sails and turned around to look for the pair and was knocked overboard by the yacht's boom due to a change in wind direction. Of course, this is all speculative. Nevertheless, in 2008, a coroner officially ruled that the men had drowned in a freak accident. Number 4. Ryu Unmaru In March 2011, Japan experienced the strongest earthquake in the country's recorded history. It was followed by a catastrophic tsunami. The colossal wave washed a 164-foot-long, 50-meter fishing boat called the Ryu Unmaru away from its mooring in Aomori Prefecture on the island of Hokkaido. Japanese officials assumed that the vessel was long gone and canceled its registration. Unbeknownst to them, the resilient ship floated across the Pacific Ocean. A year later, a Royal Canadian Air Force patrol spotted the Ryu Unmaro in the Gulf of Alaska. Because its registration had been cancelled, the ship no longer had a legal owner, and its former owner had no desire to salvage it because there were already plans in place to scrap it before it was swept away by the tsunami. A Canadian vessel called the Bernice Sea claimed salvage rights to the Ryu Unmaro and tried to tow it, but was unable to pump out its ruptured fuel tank. To prevent the wrecked ship from becoming a navigational hazard, a U.S. Coast Guard cutter set it ablaze with cannon fire in 2012. Four hours after bursting into flames, the Ryu Unmaro sank 6,000 feet to the bottom of the sea. During its descent, it released an unknown amount of diesel fuel into the water. Number 3. Bell Amica In August 2006, an Italian Coast Guard crew spotted a schooner called the Bell Amica off the coast of Sardinia in the Mediterranean Sea. The vessel was floating aimlessly near Punta Volpe with no crew aboard. It was drifting toward rocks and shallow waters, so the Coast Guard crew boarded it and steered it away. Inside the Bell Amica, they found French maps of North African seas, partially eaten Egyptian meals, a pile of clothing, and the Luxembourg flag. Investigators determined that the boat was never registered in any country, including Italy. At first, the Bell Amica was mistaken for an antique vessel. But detectives learned that it was modern and that its owner was a man from Luxembourg named Frank Ruaru. He had anchored the boat in deep water and abandoned it, later claiming that he planned to return to his yacht after addressing a family emergency back home. For many, the story didn't quite add up. The Italian press suggested that Ruaru may have deserted the Bell Amica to avoid paying taxes on it, but nobody seems to know the real story. Number 2. 
Spirit of Sacramento. Built in 1942 for the Army Corps of Engineers, the three-story Spirit of Sacramento snug boat was operated until 1954 under the name Puta. In 1955, the legendary actor and filmmaker John Wayne bought the vessel and used it in his film Blood Alley. After John Wayne sold the boat, it was rechristened the Madison Bell. It was used for river tours throughout the 1960s. The vessel got its current name in 1991 under the ownership of Channel Star Excursions. The company hosted dinner parties aboard the Spirit of Sacramento for five years until it was mostly destroyed in a fire. In 1996, a man named Captain William Barker paid $120,000 for the badly damaged boat with plans to rebuild it and use it for dinner cruises. But he kept running into bureaucratic red tape and the Spirit of Sacramento was repeatedly vandalized while Barker tried to work out these issues. Whenever he was nearly ready to open for business, it seemed like Barker encountered yet another setback. The vessel fell into disrepair and the state of California sued Barker for its removal from the Sacramento River. He moved the partially submerged boat to dry land and to this day it remains plopped along a roadside. It's located on private property but is easily viewable from the road, posing an eyesore for some and piquing the curiosity of others. Number 1. Carol A. Deering Shortly before it met with disaster in 1921, the five-masted cargo schooner Carol A. Deering was last spotted while passing the Cape Lookout lightship off the North Carolina coast. The American vessel was on its way back to Norfolk, Virginia after delivering a load of coal to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Speaking through a megaphone from the Carol A. Deering, a tall, thin man with reddish hair and a foreign accent told the Cape Lookout's keeper that the ship had lost its anchors during a storm. He asked the keeper to pass the news on to the ship's owner, the G.G. Deering Company. Three days later, a surfman named C.P. Brady discovered the Carol A. Deering off Cape Hedderas, where it had run aground. This area has been known as a common shipwreck site for centuries, earning it the nickname the Graveyard of the Atlantic. Due to bad weather, rescue ships were unable to reach the stranded vessel for several days. Deering's crew, logbook, and lifeboats were all missing, along with the crew members' personal belongings. The ship's rudder was disengaged from its stock and the steering wheel was shattered. It was evident that the crew had abandoned ship in the middle of preparing ingredients for the next day's meal. The Coast Guard tried and failed to salvage the Carol A. Deering. They declared the ship a navigational hazard and blew it up with dynamite. Nobody knows exactly what happened, but theories abound. Some people suggested that perhaps pirates or communists kidnapped the ship's crew. Others blamed bad weather, but we'll probably never know for sure. Number 10 forgotten Lambo. Rotting inside of a storage barn for over 30 years was a Lamborghini Espada, recently uncovered by a guy named Johnny Smith. The owner of the car, as well as the owner of the land on which the car had been stored, died just recently. When the new owners of the property showed up, they found the Lamborghini hidden inside the barn and called Johnny to help with an appraisal. The odometer read only 4,500 miles, 7,242 kilometers, which is basically nothing for a Lamborghini from the 70s. It was also found to be in perfect condition. However, with the original owner of the car long gone, nobody has an explanation as to how it wound up in the middle of sheep country in England. Lamborghinis aren't exactly popular in England in the first place, and this one was locked up in a barn in a place about as rural as it gets. As for the car itself, only about 1,200 Espadas were built between 1968 and 1978. It was described at the time as the Rolls Royce of Lamborghini for being more comfortable than most GTs. We don't know if this thing even runs, if anybody's actually going to make any money off of it, or if it'll just end up rotting in the barn for another 30 years. After all, who would want to buy a car that had mice breeding in its trunk? Number 9. Spanish Space Trash Residents of the small countryside town of Murcia had a bit too much excitement recently when a bizarre object showed up from out of nowhere. A pair of shepherd brothers tending to their flocks were the first to stumble upon the mysterious abandoned object. They'd never seen anything like it before, measuring about three feet, one meter in diameter, and wrapped in some kind of strange black material. They know it must have dropped out of the sky, so they got a hold of the local authorities, and then they sent the civil guard to investigate. They activated their protocols for nuclear, radiological, and bacteriological threats. They thought it could be some kind of deadly military device accidentally dropped out of an airplane. However, the mysterious object turned out to be nothing more than a piece of space trash from either a rocket or a satellite. According to the Civil Guard in Spain, it was most likely an auxiliary fuel tank. Number 8. Scraps of the Cacapo Shipwreck The Cacapo was a British steamship built in 1898, commanded by Captain P. Nicolaisen. The Cacapo came to a horrible end on her maiden voyage. The ship was on its way from Wales in the United Kingdom to Sydney in Australia. 
She was due to stop halfway in Cape Town on May 25, 1900, but before she ever made it, she got stuck in a ferocious gale and was pushed ashore onto Nordhook Beach. Nobody died in the crash, but the vessel never sailed again. It got stuck right there on the beach with the crew unable to get her back into the water. They had no choice but to leave the ship where she lay. 120 years later, the Kakapo is still there in the sand. Not much remains of the ship other than a few scraps of her broken hull and some fragments of the boilers. The beach is now a tourist destination for kite flying and horse riding. But if you look hard enough along the beach, you may just find pieces of the Kakapo shipwreck jutting up from the sand. Number 7. Vintage Games A couple of youngsters on YouTube made a shocking discovery when they let themselves into an abandoned house and discovered a collection of ancient video games worth over $100,000. The house itself was infested with cockroaches, there was trash everywhere, and the whole place looked like it was rife with disease. According to the treasure hunters, the place had been abandoned for at least 20 years. It was due to be demolished just days after they went searching for collectibles. They made the major discovery in a back room where somebody had left their video game stash and never bothered to go back for it. They found vintage titles from the PlayStation 2, the Nintendo GameCube, and the Xbox 360. Obviously, this stuff wasn't ancient, and a lot of it was covered in rat feces, but there were some real gems. There were blockbuster videotapes, they found a PS1 copy of Tomba, and somebody even got bitten by a spider while trying to pack all the video games out of the derelict home. What would you do if you came across such an impressive collection of old video games? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Meteorite in the Bedroom Ruth Hamilton was lying in bed in her house in the beautiful city of Golden, British Columbia. She was fast asleep and it was the middle of the night. She suddenly woke up to the sound of her dog barking. Seconds later, there was a massive explosion and shrapnel fell all over her face. She rolled out of bed and flicked on the lights, not having any clue what was going on. She actually reached for her phone and called 911. When the cops arrived at Ruth's house, no crime had been committed. There were no intruders and nobody had tried to blow her house up. Instead, they found a meteorite lying on the pillow right next to where Ruth had been sleeping. A space rock had literally crashed through her ceiling and landed on the pillow beside her head. Had the space rock been a bit to the left, just a few inches, it would have obliterated her face. Just to make sure this was indeed a meteorite, Ruth and the police reached out to students at the Western University in London. They confirmed 100% that it was definitely a space rock that crashed through Ruth's ceiling. Plus, witnesses in town had seen the explosion made by the meteorite in the seconds before it smashed into her house like a small fireball exploding in the sky. Rather than sell the space rock, Ruth plans to keep it once the university students are done analyzing it. Number 5. Treasure in a Drawer When a British couple wandered into an abandoned country home near the border of the Scottish Highlands, they never imagined they would be walking out with over a million dollars. They were looking for valuables, antiques in particular, that they could sell at an auction house. When they opened up the drawer of an old cabinet, they came across a small ceramic plate. On the plate was a picture of the biblical scene of Samson and Delilah painted beautifully. At first, they thought it was just an ordinary decorative plate, but something told them to take it. So they took the plate, left the abandoned house, and brought it to an antique expert. As it turned out, it was a hand-painted relic from the famous Italian ceramicist Nicola de Urbino, created around the year 1520. This was a real historical relic. When they took it to auction, the bidding organizers estimated that it would fetch them up to around $140,000. That's pretty good on its own. But when they finally took their plate to auction, they ended up walking away with $1.7 million. A curious trip to an abandoned house set this British couple up with cash for the rest of their lives. Number 4. Artifacts in an Alligator The last place you'd expect to find a collection of abandoned artifacts is inside the belly of an animal. But in Mississippi, that's exactly what Shane Smith discovered. Shane owns Red Antler Processing in Yazoo City and is no stranger to digging through animal guts. When he brought in a 13.5-foot, 4-meter alligator, one of the first things he had to do was check out the contents of its stomach. Amazingly, not only did Shane find the usual mixture of bones and animal remains, he also found a pair of Native American artifacts dating back thousands of years. One of the artifacts is a hunting tool, something like an ancient fishing lure. The other artifact is a projectile point which could have been used on the end of a spear as a hunting dart or even as an arrow tip. Seeing as Native Americans have been inhabiting Mississippi for the past 12,000 years, it's no surprise that some of the artifacts got lost in the Mississippi River. The alligator must have accidentally slurped them up while hanging out on the riverbed, totally by accident. Scientists don't know exactly how long they were in the alligator's stomach as the reptile was about 100 years old when it died. 
But what they do know is that the artifacts go back at least 4,000 years to before Europeans ever set foot in North America. Number 3. Monolith on the Beach Back in 2020, everyone was talking about the Utah monolith, the mysterious metallic structure that appeared in a park in Utah like something out of a science fiction movie. But what nobody was talking about was the exact same monolith that was left abandoned on the Isle of Wight in the United Kingdom. The strange mirrored structure was simply left on the beach where locals stumbled upon it and were shocked. The first person to discover the monolith was Alexia Fishwick, who described herself as dumbstruck when she came across the magical totem. After she took photographs of the monolith and went home, she posted them on social media. She was immediately called a liar and people said the pictures were photoshopped. But as more and more people came across the monolith, it became obvious that the object was real. So what was this abandoned monolith? Shortly after the Utah monolith, an organization called the Most Famous Artist took credit for the creepy art installation. But this one was just a prank put out on the beach by an ordinary guy named Tom Dumford. It was actually removed by the National Trust and then put up for sale on eBay. Number 2. Prehistoric Ski Archaeologists discovered somebody's missing ski on the top of a mountain in Norway. The first ski was found seven years ago, and ever since the experts have been trying to track down the second ski. It was 2014 when archaeologists with the Secrets of the Ice program made the bizarre discovery. 1300 years before today, an ancient person was skiing up in the mountains when they abandoned one of their wooden skis. It got stuck in the ice where it remained buried until the world started to heat up and the ice started to melt. Archaeologists say the ski was in an amazing state of preservation, still with its bindings of birch rope and leather straps attached. Naturally, archaeologists wanted to know where the second ski was. Unless the first one belonged to a one-legged Viking, there must have been a second ski. And in September of 2021, a second ski was found just 16 feet from where the first one was. The second ski is a little larger, though the two definitely could have been a pair. The big issue now is trying to figure out why the skis were abandoned in the first place. Did the skier die, get injured, or get carried away by a giant prehistoric bird? Number 1. Abandoned Space Capsule what appeared to be an abandoned space capsule caused quite a commotion on the side of the highway in Arizona near Casa Grande. People driving by were shocked to see a space vehicle just lying there in the dirt. It was so shocking that some Arizona residents grabbed their phones and called 911. People reported to the police that there was an extraterrestrial dropship in the desert, that a space capsule had fallen from the sky and all kinds of other crazy nonsense. The police had no choice but to do something about the mysterious object. They got the Department of Public Safety to send one of their officers to investigate. What they found wasn't a space capsule or an abandoned alien ship. It was actually a drum from a cement truck that had been painted to look just like a space capsule. This was done by an artist named Jack Millard, 53 years old, from Scottsdale. He'd been driving from Phoenix to Tucson when he discovered the abandoned cement mixer beside the interstate and decided to repurpose it as a space capsule. It took him only two days to complete the project, turning an abandoned piece of junk into a piece of art. It's just too bad everyone in Arizona assumed it was an alien invasion and called the police. Number 10. Fukushima In March 2011, a powerful earthquake struck near the Japanese coast and was followed by a mega tsunami. The disaster heavily damaged the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Okuma. A nuclear meltdown ensued and the nearly 100,000 people living within 18 miles of the disaster were evacuated. Only a handful of residents have been allowed to return to villages on the very outer reaches of the exclusion zone. Ten years later, cleanup at the power plant is still in its early stages and radioactivity is still detectable in the water. Meanwhile, nature has reclaimed the residential areas nearby. In 2016, photographer Tetsuro Takehana traveled to Fukushima's so-called difficult-to-return-to zones. He captured eerie images of overgrown cars, parking lots, and buildings. In one athletic field, only the goalposts remain visible. Speaking with the Japanese newspaper Asahi Shimbun, Takehana said that it was as if time had stopped and yet the grass and trees continue to grow. Soon enough, any sign that humans ever lived in the area will be buried beneath the thick foliage and the wild animals who have taken over. Number 9. Belitz Heilstaden Hospital Would you be brave enough to explore a creepy abandoned hospital? Belitz Heilstaden Hospital was originally built as a tuberculosis sanatorium. Located southwest of Berlin, the enormous complex consisted of around 60 buildings that first opened their doors in 1898. At the time, it was the world's largest treatment center for tuberculosis and other lung diseases. During World War I, Belitz Heilstaden served as a field hospital. Adolf Hitler himself was admitted there in 1916 with a leg wound he incurred at the Battle of Somme. 
Ironically, the site became a field hospital for wounded Nazi soldiers serving under Hitler during World War II. Red Army forces occupied the property in 1945 as the war drew to a close. Belitz Heilstätten maintained a Soviet presence until 1994 when the last remaining personnel cleared out in the years following the fall of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the Soviet Union. Parts of the complex are still used today, but most of those buildings are abandoned. They've become a popular tourist attraction and are occasionally used as movie sets. The decaying structure stands seemingly frozen in time, boasting a paradoxical mix of elegant architecture and haunting beauty, while serving as an eerie reminder of one of history's darkest chapters. They're mostly empty with the exception of a few items, including two pianos that were left behind. Number 8. Taman Festival On the east coast of the Indonesian island of Bali, there's a theme park that never even opened for business before it was abandoned. The Indonesian government began building the park dubbed Taman Festival over two decades ago in the town of Sanur. They planned to turn it into a tourist hotspot with state-of-the-art attractions, including Bali's largest swimming pool, a 3D cinema, a laser show, an inverted roller coaster, and more. But the plans evidently changed, and after spending $100 million, the project was abandoned without explanation. There are numerous theories for why this happened, with most revolving around possible financial problems, poor decision-making, land disputes, and lightning damage that insurance refused to cover. While exploring abandoned sites is a popular activity in many cultures, Balinese legend holds that roaming spirits occupy left-behind structures and properties, so locals tend to avoid having anything to do with places like Taman Festival. In fact, the park is considered one of Bali's most haunted sites. Nature has almost completely taken over this graffiti-covered amusement park that never was. There's an empty alligator pit, and rumors about local farmers feeding their chickens to a group of the abandoned reptiles who eventually resorted to cannibalism and ate each other. Number 7. Rolling Acres Mall Kids in the 80s and 90s would never believe it if we told them one day malls wouldn't be cool places to hang out. When online shopping came along, most Americans hopped on the bandwagon and never looked back. After all, unless you're in a hurry for something, why would you travel to a store when it could be yours with the click of a button? This convenient new way to shop had a devastating impact on shopping malls throughout the U.S., sparking an era known as the retail apocalypse. The Rolling Acres Mall in Akron, Ohio became one of the most famous ghost malls in the country. This poster child of the retail apocalypse grew increasingly empty over time as retailers who could no longer afford rent bailed. The mall finally closed in 2008 after a decade-long decline amid threats to cut off the electricity due to non-payment. A few department stores remained open, but they too eventually shuttered their doors. In 2013, J.C. Penney was the last company to leave. The shopping mall, which once housed 140 businesses, quickly became a dilapidated shell of its former self. Nature took over the parking lot, and the interior was plagued by everything from plant overgrowth to flooding. Snow fell through the broken skylights during the wintertime, covering the escalator and floor below. Naturally, the mall became a magnet for homeless people and deviants, and it came with major safety hazards to those who dared to enter. In 2011, a man was electrocuted while trying to steal copper wiring. Later that year, a murder victim was found on the property. Most of the rotting structure was demolished in 2016. Ironically, as if to mark the victory of online business over the shopping mall, the property is slated to become the site of a 700,000 square foot, 65,032 square meters Amazon fulfillment center. Talk about rubbing salt in the wound. Would you like to check out this abandoned mall? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Poveglia Located near Venice in northern Italy, Poveglia is a small island that first appeared on the historical record during the 5th century. It was inhabited until 1379 when residents fled warfare between Genoa and Venice. In 1776, Poveglia became a quarantine station for plague victims and people suffering from other contagious diseases. The site became a mental hospital in 1922 and has been vacant ever since the insane asylum closed in 1968. In recent years, efforts to turn Poveglia into a luxury vacation resort have failed. According to rumors, over half the soil on the island contains the remains of more than 160,000 sick people who died there. Archaeologists have found mass graves filled with thousands of plague victims on nearby islands, but they have yet to fully investigate Poveglia. Legend holds that a doctor who worked at the mental hospital tortured, killed, and butchered patients. These claims remain unsubstantiated, but they also haven't been disproven. Meanwhile, the hospital's ruins are slowly being reclaimed by nature. Many paranormal enthusiasts believe Poveglia is haunted and would love to explore it. 
but the island is off limits to visitors, and there's no word on if or when it'll open up to tourists. For now, adventurers with supernatural curiosities can visit the nearby island of San Servolo, where the remains of an insane asylum are preserved as a museum. Number 5. Buckner Building Located on the western edge of Prince William Sound in Whittier, Alaska, the Composite Bachelor Housing Service and Recreation Center was built in 1953 to accommodate the Cold War-era housing and recreational needs of a thousand American soldiers. It's better known as the Buckner Building and was once nicknamed the City Under One Roof. At six stories high, it was one of Alaska's tallest buildings for quite some time. Built by the Army Corps of Engineers, the 275,000 square foot, 25,548 meters squared structure contained everything someone would need and more under one roof. The amenities included a mess hall, sleeping quarters, movie theater, bowling alley, a small jail, and a series of tunnels connecting the building to other parts of Whittier. Strategically located near an all-weather railroad port and deep water ocean terminal that stayed open year-round, the Buckner Building played a crucial role in supplying Alaska with military supplies. As an added bonus, the site's near-constant cloud cover protected it from potential airstrikes. The military pulled out of Whittier in 1966, and the building has changed hands several times since. At one point, there were plans to turn the site into a state prison, but they failed to pan out. The Buckner Building fell into disrepair under the ownership of the people of Whittier. Ever since, it's been caught in a cycle of freezing and thawing, and its broken doors and windows welcome the elements inside with open arms. The property went into foreclosure in 2016, but its future remains uncertain as local and state authorities grapple over what to do with it. In a bid to preserve history, the city would like to see the Buckner Building saved, but the Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation wants the structure demolished. Number 4. Cary Furnaces Located along the Monongahela River near Pittsburgh, the Cary Furnaces are disused blast furnaces that operated from 1907 to 1978 as part of the Homestead Steel Works. Standing at 92 feet, 28 meters tall, they're among the only surviving 20th century blast furnaces from before World War II. At its peak, Homestead Steelworks produced 1,000 to 1,250 tons of iron per day. Its glory days came to an end when the steel industry collapsed during the 70s and 80s. The lone structures that remain today stand in stark contrast to the once bustling post-industrial site. They're enclosed by train tracks and surrounded by wild plants. In 2006, the Cary Furnaces became a National Historic Landmark. Anyone looking to take a step back in time can visit the Cary Furnaces and learn about the prosperous days when Pittsburgh dominated the steel industry through guided tours that discuss the site's iron-making technology, workers, and culture. Number 3. Burj Al Babas Halfway between Istanbul, Turkey's largest city, and its capital Ankara is an abandoned hillside settlement called Burj Al Babas. There you'll find 732 pristine-looking miniature castle-like chalets in various states of completion. Construction on the yet unfinished project began in 2014. The project was abandoned just four years later when the development company went bankrupt. All investors pulled out and the future of the chalets remains uncertain. Over $200 million was invested in the project before it ground to a halt mid-construction. As a result, the settlement looks more like a dystopian nightmare than a neighborhood for wealthy homeowners. Each three-story chalet was planned to look identical on the outside and buyers would have been able to customize the interior. Plans to finish the homes and to build a movie theater, Turkish bath, and sports facilities are on hold until further notice. At this point, it's looking like the builders and investors could possibly recoup or mitigate their losses at best, and that's if the project is ever completed. Number 2. Initiation Wells Outside the civil parish of Sintra near the Portuguese coast, there's a whimsical estate called Quinta de Regaleira. The site bears hints of Gothic, Egyptian, Moorish, and Renaissance architecture featuring lakes, grottos, benches, fountains, and two particular structures known as the Initiation Wells. They never held water despite their name and were instead used as part of a mysterious ritual. The palace has changed hands numerous times, but it gained its unique flair after an eccentric Brazilian-Portuguese businessman named Carvalho Monteiro bought it from a wealthy merchant family in 1892. Monteiro adorned the property with Christian and pagan symbolism, and he also designed and built the initiation wells. He was deeply interested in the Knights Templar, a secret society that was reportedly disbanded over seven centuries ago. Many people believe that modern organizations continue the group's traditions, and that Monteiro was a member of one. Some even think that the Knights Templar itself still exists covertly, keeping its activities extremely hush-hush. The ritual that took place at the initiation well supposedly required a participant to descend the structure's nine staircases blindfolded while holding a blade near their heart. 
Then the individual had to blindly navigate their way through a dark labyrinth and cross through water and over some stones to reach the chapel where the Brotherhood would welcome them in. While these ceremonies no longer go on at the initiation wells, the site is open to the public and visitors can walk the same steps as new members of the mysterious clubs used to. Number 1. Haludovo Palace Hotel The Croatian island of Kirk is home to a crumbling abandoned hotel that could perhaps be best described as resembling a decaying vintage sci-fi movie set. Built in 1971, the Haludovo Palace Hotel was once a luxury destination for vacationers in what was then Yugoslavia. Certain aspects of the crumbling structure, including its monolithic qualities, resemble typical communist architecture of the time. Shortly after the hotel opened, Penthouse Magazine founder Bob Guccione became an unlikely diplomat of sorts. He invested $45 million in the property and expanded it to include a penthouse casino in hopes of encouraging better relations between the U.S. and Yugoslavia. Of course, there was something in it for him. Generous laws that allowed casino owners to withdraw money from the country tax-free. The ritzy resort attracted foreign tourists of high-ranking social status, including athletes, actors, and world leaders. But these glory days came to an abrupt end when war broke out in Yugoslavia in 1990 and drove away the high-end clientele that the Haludova Palace Hotel depended on to stay afloat. The business closed and became a shelter for refugees. It then sat abandoned for years before Croatia gained its independence. By then it was decrepit, but several owners nevertheless attempted to revive it. The final guest stayed there in 2001. Skylights and windows are broken, the elevators are in disrepair, and the pool is empty and missing tiles. In addition to being an eyesore, the site is a safety hazard. Concrete is crumbling, metal fixtures are rusted and sharp, and chunks of broken glass are subject to fall onto someone at any given moment. Will the Haludovo Palace Hotel ever bounce back? Probably not. It's an utter disaster and not to mention, its fixtures and style are completely outdated and bizarre according to modern tastes. Most investors see the cost of fixing the place up as far more than it's worth. Thanks for watching. Would you like to visit any of these creepy abandoned places? Which one? Let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.